Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to return to cooling a Raspberry Pi 4. In the last of these videos I ended up with a custom active cooling rig and I got some very good cooling results. But since I made that video I've been sent a couple of commercial products that might work just as well. One is the uh, Fan Shim from Pi Maroni, so I'm going to be trying that out. And the other is this, which is the Ice Tower Cooler for the Raspberry Pi 4 from 52Pi. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to be conducting some more of my own tests, but also testing out these two products, see how good we can get the cooling on a Raspberry Pi 4. In my first Raspberry Pi 4 cooling video, I ran a stress test with the Pi in its official case with no cooling solution, with the Pi out of the case with a small heatsink on its SOC, with the Pi in a Pi Maroni Pibo case with a 40 by 30 mm heatsink on the SOC, and finally with heatsinks on the SOC, USB controller and Ethernet controller, and with a 40 mm Noctua fan in this custom 3D printed mount. This gave us four sets of results, which indicated that the Pi 4 throttles badly inside its own case, does little better with a small or even a medium sized heatsink, but does run far cooler with a 40mm Noctua fan. Since I posted the video, I've had many requests for further tests, and in particular to test out my Noctua fan with no heatsinks. And so, I've taken my custom rig apart, removed the heatsinks, and if we put it back together, we can try just that. So, if we boot this thing up and leave it to idle for a few minutes, we can go to the Raspbian desktop to run our test script. And just to remind you, this is a bash script, which basically has a little loop in it. It takes a temperature measurement and then stresses out the Pi using Sysbench to factor prime numbers up to a value of 25,000. Keeps going through that loop, taking a measurement, stressing out the Pi a bit more, and takes a final temperature measurement. And this has been set up so if the Pi doesn't throttle, it should run for about 10 minutes. So let's get rid of that and bring up a terminal so we can start off the test. And uh, here we go. Pi seems to have been idling at about 40 degrees C. That's clearly very good indeed. And I should let you know the ambient here today is about 25 degrees C, which by pure chance is what it was when I ran the tests in, in the previous video. And I should also let you know that on this Pi, I've implemented the USB controller firmware update to reduce its power consumption and therefore to reduce temperatures a little. This was done before any of the tests were run in the last video and obviously the tests in this video. I know some people have had problems with that firmware update. I haven't, but uh, I just thought I'd let you know it's been applied here. So let's now speed through to the end of the test. And there we are. It's finished and some very interesting results. So let's add those results to our previous table. And as you can see, we actually started off slightly cooler than when we had the heat sinks fitted. And we ended up about a three degrees higher in terms of how it stabilized, which suggests there was not a lot of point in messing around with all those heat sinks. It clearly is the, uh, the air, the active cooling, which is keeping the pie nice and cool using the Noctua fan. Very interesting results there. And uh, I think this makes it really interesting to now move forward to look at some other active cooling solutions. Right, let's now take a look at this, which is the uh, fan shim from Pi Maroni, which has already got a very good reputation as a Pi 4 cooler. So I'm very pleased I've sent one to have a look at. So let's take a look inside. Looks like a very, very simple unboxing. There we are, what's inside here, presumably all oh, different pieces. There we are, what have we got? This clearly looks like the fan itself. I can recognize a fan and a crinky, crinky little bag. There we are, there's, there's the fan, 30 millimeter fan, I think. And this in here, very, uh, oh, very crinkly bag. This looks like a little circuit board. There we are, there's the circuit board for, for the fan, and over here there's some mounting hardware. So I think I just need to put this thing together. And uh, there we are, I've now got that together. Let's just give you a close-up shot so you can have a proper look at the uh, fan shim. And it's worth noting this can be a temperature control fan if you want to run the, uh, the appropriate software. 
I'm not going to try out temperature control here because we're stress testing the Pi, but it's good to know you can have this fan temperature control. So let's fit it on a Pi 4, and I'm going to fit it on a Pi 4 in this case, which is the Pi Bow case from Pi Maroni. Really like this case. You might remember I tried this in the previous Pi 4 cooling video using one of their heat sinks in here. And you might also remember that in the last video, I had a problem with the top section of this case, which actually snapped on me in one place, which was very sad. And I've realized now the reason for that, and they've now supplied me a, a new piece, so it's not snapped, it's all in good condition here. The reason I had the problem was because my Pi 4 was supplied very early before, before release, and there was a tiny clip on the, the top of the, uh, the camera connector here, and that's the thing that caused the problem with the case. So it's, well, it was my fault. It certainly wasn't Primaroni's fault. Everything is now working fine. There's no problems with this case. Anyway, let's fit the uh, fan shim, which goes on uh, here like this. And I think all you have to do is just take the last GPOs and push it down. Oh, that is neat. What a neat solution. If you want a very quick way of fitting a fan onto a Raspberry Pi 4, clearly that is the way to do it. It's really upside down for you, isn't it? There we are. You can you can read the logo properly there. That's a very, very neat Raspberry Pi 4 cooling solution. So let's get this thing connected up, which means it has got to come back round that way to find all my wires here. Let's put everything in. And uh, there we are, it is now ready. So let's uh, power the thing up. And the first thing you notice, this is a very, very quiet fan. A really quiet fan. The Noctua fan isn't that noisy, but this is really very quiet indeed. So let's go to our desktop and let's start off the test. And there we are, it's finished. And again, some good results. This is clearly a very effective as well as very easy to fit Pi 4 cooling solution. So let's just uh, put the FAMSHIM results onto our new table next to the Noctua fan without the heatsink. And as you can see, the uh, FAMSHIM is running about five degrees higher all the way through, about uh, five or six degrees higher, well, six degrees higher in, in terms of uh, idling and about uh, five degrees higher in terms of where it settles. So again, a very good result. If you want a very easy to fit Pi 4 cooling solution, clearly the FAMSHIM from Pi Maroni is a very good option. Right, let's now move on to this, which is the ice tower cooler from 52 Pi for the Raspberry Pi. And this is a bit like a high-end PC cooler you'd normally use on a desktop PC, but designed to fit on a Raspberry Pi, as you will see. So let's open it up. Very exciting little box. And uh, oh, there's uh, even some instructions. And we can see it here. Seems to be very well packed. There's the, the cooler itself. Wow, that is... Hopefully what I've just talked about, you can understand why. That's, that's uh, like a, a high-end cooler for a PC, isn't it? It's got a heat pipe and um, that's really nice. And there's also in here some um, bits of metal, two mounting kits and uh, various bits of hardware. Let's get uh, all of this out and uh, show it you in a bit more uh, detail. And here we are. Here's the cooler again with its uh, wires to connect to GPIO 5 volt power. And then one of the critical things here is these two mounting brackets, because clearly this has to stay on the Pi, and the Pi doesn't have any mounting for a, a cooler, for a fan or a heatsink or anything. So these two brackets, which are quite a heavy-duty metal, these will actually connect to the Pi, and the cooler mounts in the middle of these two brackets, as you can, you can probably see it'll go in there. And these two brackets are for a Raspberry Pi 4B, but they also supplied in the box these brackets, which means you can use this cooler with a Raspberry Pi a 3B or, or 3B Plus, which is really nice, isn't it? And so basically we've got some screws here which will screw these brackets onto the cooler, and they provided three, we only need two, it's nice to have a spare, and then there's some screws and some riders to uh, connect this to the Pi, again there were some spares, and there are three heat pads. We only need one heat pad, it's great they've given us three. Everything here anticipates you taking it off, putting it on again, using it over time. I really like that attention to detail in this kit. And the final thing I'd say is although you can use a heat pad, you could also use thermal compound, and they note that in their instructions over on the 52Pi website. So I'm going to be using some of this Arctica MX4, not the newest MX4 in the world, but I think this will be better than using a heat pad when I put it together. 
So let's now get this mounted up on the Pi. And here it is, the, the final result. It really looks absolutely fantastic sitting on the Pi. It makes me think back to the fact that the Raspberry Pi Foundation with the launch of the Pi 4B talked about the Pi being able to be used as a small desktop PC. And the Pi now looks like a small desktop PC with a desktop cooler. It's, it's brilliant. I'd love to have a case for this which was clear so you could actually see these, these fantastic features inside. And it was very interesting fitting this cooler. It was like putting a desktop system together. The fit is very, very good between the uh, cooler and the, and the chip. You could feel your thermal paste just sort of like slightly squeezing and, and pulling and going into place beautifully. It really fits together very well indeed. If you get the feeling I'm extremely impressed with the 52 Pi ice cooler for the Pi, I am extremely impressed with the, the 52 Pi ice cooler for the Pi. It really is a lovely peripheral. So let's get it connected up and uh, turn the thing on. Oh, it's even illuminated. It's illuminated blue, isn't that nice? So I want to see it at night now, see what it looks like in the darker, but it looks even more exciting. Yes, I like this, this device. This is a really lovely cooler on the Pi. It makes me imagine that this is where single board computing is heading, having really good cooling solutions on small boards, because inevitably as these boards get more and more powerful, we'll be able to have all the computing power we need in the board this, this big, not that, that long into the future, but we will have to have decent cooling. So, Anyway, I suppose we should get on and run our test. That's what we're really here for. So let's go to the, the Raspbian desktop and execute the script. And there we are, some amazing results. The ice tower truly living up to its name here. More than 20 degrees cooler than we saw with the fan shim and well over 10 degrees cooler than we saw using the not chewer fan with or without heat sinks. So, if you don't mind having a very large heatsink mounted on the top of your Pi, I think it looks cool, but it wouldn't fit in all situations. If you don't mind that, then you can get these brilliant cooling results. I'm, I'm so pleased I used the Arctic uh, thermal paste here rather than the thermal pad to get the maximum results out of the ice tower. These are really brilliant results. So, I'm sure some of you are asking what would happen if we used the ice tower cooler but disconnected the fan so we had a completely silent solution. No longer an active cooling solution, but I think it's worth testing it. So here we've got the Raspberry Pi running with the ice tower without the fan connected. So I'll uh, go to the desktop and uh, run the test. And there we are, we have our final set of results. And to me, these highlight the significance of a moving air because these are the worst results we've seen in, in this video. And clearly we're seeing the, the ice tower, while it's perfectly acceptable as a, as a passive cooling solution, it is outperformed by every active cooling solution we've looked at. So to me, those are interesting results to finish off these tests. As we've seen in this video, it's possible to actively cool a Raspberry Pi 4 so that it runs at very acceptable temperatures under load. Now, admittedly, for many Pi applications, a passive cooling solution, a completely silent cooling solution, would be preferable. And one option, as we've seen, is to use the ice tower cooler with the fan turned off or even removed. This said, I will be making a future video looking at a broader range of passive cooling solutions for the Raspberry Pi 4. But now that's it for this video. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.